Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Vantage Point. We are so excited today because we get to meet and greet educators from around the world. And we have a special guest with us today, Chris Matthews, all the way from Medellin, Colombia, who's done an exciting project on Choose Your Own Adventure and authored a book. Chris, welcome. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, Wallace. Uh, thanks so much for having me on. Absolutely. Before we get into the book itself, tell us a little bit about yourself, your journey in education. I know you're also international. Uh, so tell us a little bit about that experience. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I've been a lot of places. Uh, I started uh, my teaching career in Denver, Colorado, in the public school system there, DPS. Um, and I spent five years there, uh, worked with some amazing kids and some great other educators and got, uh, you know, uh, that was kind of where I cut my teeth, uh, teaching math. Uh, after my experience in Denver, I moved up to Seattle, Washington and worked at a little private school. Um, and I was lucky enough there to have a lot of freedom uh, over the, the curriculum that I was creating for kids and uh, got really into board games and tried to find ways to connect those two things. Um, and I spent four years up in Seattle uh, before uh, uh, trying international teaching. Um, so I'm, I'm currently in uh, Medellin, Colombia. Um, and uh, yeah, I've, I've also been writing books for Choose Your Own Adventure for the last couple of years. Chris, yeah, and I, you know, I want to stop there before we even go into the book, because there's a lot of folks at School of Rubric who are in international education. I myself was also stateside but then went international for about 10 years. And I'm curious, what made you take the jump from teaching and working in the United States to living and working internationally? And how's that been? Uh, you know, it's been uh, it's been a, it's been a great adventure. I think uh, for for me, I was uh, excited for a new challenge, and I was interested in learning Spanish and learning a new culture and living abroad. Um, and it has uh, it's it's been uh, there's been some downs for sure, but overall, uh, I've really loved my time in Colombia, and uh, I just I love the culture here, the people, the weather, um, the food, and uh, really have enjoyed my experience living abroad. Amazing, and we always tell people, you know. International education is one of the best kept secrets out there. And some people like going international and staying for a couple of years. Some people go and stay forever. But, you know, it's always a great idea to go and explore different cultures and have the opportunity to go and, you know, live abroad. Uh, Chris, I want to talk a little bit about your book, which is really the reason that we're here today. It's called The Dreg Disaster. I actually have a copy because the folks that choose your own adventure were nice enough to send me a copy. Chris, I'd love to learn a little bit more. What inspired this book? Why, why this format? Why choose your, you know, why write a book? Why write a math book? And then of all the formats you could use to write a math book, why choose your own adventure? Uh, that's a great question. I, uh, so when I was living and working in Seattle, uh, like I said, I had a lot of freedom and I got really into board games. Um, and so one of the things that I started doing in my classroom was building uh, kind of these elaborate escape rooms that my kids, uh, that I kind of built into the curriculum. So escape rooms around Pythagorean theorem and uh, proportional reasoning and lots of other things. Um, and the kids really connected with that. They thought it was really fun using these board game mechanics to practice math. Um, and at the time I was, uh, you know, there's a few great board game stores in Seattle. And so I was able to, you know, in my free time, I would just go in there and shop for board games for me and my friends and also kind of look at them through the lens of a teacher. Um, and see if there were, you know, game mechanics that I could use as part of a lesson or part of an activity in class. Um, and I came across Choose Your Own Adventures' uh, first board game, uh, which was called uh, House of Danger. Uh, and it's a, it's a great little board game. Uh, and the mechanics are pretty similar to the books that we remember from when we were kids, where you you know, read a section, a narrative, and then there's a choice and you go here and, uh, you know, I bought the game for friends, but then immediately when I started playing it, I was like, oh, this is an easy math connection. You just have to replace the, you know, go to page 50 to explore the haunted mansion or, or whatever the choices that you're faced with, with a math problem. Um, and then the solution to the math problem can be that connective tissue that shows you where the story continues. Um, and so my, my first draft of this was, was really just for my kids in my class. It was right at the beginning of COVID and the year, you know, we had kind of lost all this time. And my initial plan with this was just to create a resource that I could send home with them as like a thank you for a great year and, you know, something to do during COVID. And, you know, I didn't have any idea how long COVID was going to be around for. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I did all the work, kind of put together 
uh, a version, uh, you know, this idea, but with uh, with the words from that from that original board game um, and showed it to my principal. And she encouraged me to kind of reach out and see if there was someone who might be interested in that idea um, on a larger scale. And so I reached out to choose your own adventure and uh, you know, we kind of started uh, talking about what a book would look like and uh, you know, ended up uh, not using the, the, the house of danger stuff, but uh, ended up creating our a whole new narrative with all new characters um, that kind of fits a little better with, uh, with the idea of math practice. Um, you know, there's some structural things that are a little bit different with, with my book than the board game. Yeah. Right. You know, Chris, I, you know, I mean, just kind of as a segue, one of the things that I really love hearing about your journey is the fact that you've been doing some gamification, you've been doing some experimenting in the classroom, but you know, you had a mentor or a leader or a principal out there that really believed in the good that you were doing in the classroom and encouraged you to explore avenues in which to share your work, which I think is really important because there are a lot of teachers out there that are really doing amazing things, but sadly, a lot of their amazing things are confined just to their classroom. And I think this day and age, what we want to do is we want to have more teachers like you who are willing to put themselves out there and put their material out there and share with other folks so that we can learn. You know, Chris, uh, I was looking through it as a, I was a former math teacher myself. And one of the things I really love about the book, I'll just even hold it up, is you've kind of got the book here and then you have the typical choose your choice. And then you kind of have to solve an equation to get down, down there. But I think one of the things that I appreciate is at the top of the book, it actually says you should have arrived here from page 45. So just in case if you solve the problem incorrectly, or if you went to a page that might have been incorrect, then you have a way to check your work. And at the end of each chapter, there's actually solutions. It's actually worked out, so you can actually refer to it. And I guess one of the things that I really appreciate is it, it's about the process, isn't it? It's not necessarily about the solution. It's about the process. Can you talk a little bit about that and kind of the way you formatted the book? Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, and this format is a little bit about the solution because you have to get the right answer to go to the right page. But I really wanted uh, the story to kind of be a carrot to encourage that exploration and like an incentive to kind of like pull kids along. Um, from my experience making escape rooms, uh, that uh, you know, find like turning to the page. I'm really hoping that when students are working through this, turning to that page and seeing you came here from the right page, like that little hit of dopamine. Uh, right. And then in addition to Maria Posado's amazing artwork and hopefully, uh, hopefully kids can kind of connect to this, to the silly story that I wrote. Um, you know, I'm hoping that all those things work together. And like you said, create like an experience in practicing math that's more than just solving a proportion or uh, finding the value of X in an equation. Um, you know, this is a, a different way of approaching math practice, I, I hope. Um, right. Yeah. yeah, I do think it's a, beyond the gamification aspect. It's also, I think we talked about this slightly before, but it's not, you know, typically when you go in math, it's just math. And there's mm -hmm. not too many opportunities to teach across the curriculum. And I think this is a very interesting way because not only are you working on math and working on equations and working on solving problems, but you're also doing, doing it within the context of reading a story and being pretty mesmerized. I actually am going through this book myself with my son. He needs a little help with math, the math part itself because he's a little younger, but we've gone through chapter one and we've just gotten to chapter two and he's pretty captivated. What's the reception been with some of the kids that you've worked with or maybe other kids that you've heard of their experiences working with the book? Honestly, uh, we're, uh, I think we're still in the process of kind of getting the word out about this book. Um, it was really fun. I, I got a, a couple free promo copies that Choose Your Own Adventure was nice enough to send down to Columbia. And uh, one of my students from last year, I gave him one of the copies of the book and it was great because he would uh, read through a couple pages and then when he got stuck he would come in and like we would work at lunch and kind of talk through the math uh, where he was stuck and then he'd come back a couple days later um, and that that was really fun he really enjoyed uh, the story and kind of that approach uh, to math practice but um, I'm really excited uh, I, I'm hopeful that, that uh, this book can get in more kids hands and we can get uh, some more data points as to what the you know like what this experience of, of practicing math like this is is really like um, yeah you know, it's, a, it's yeah. a great resource and I know it's it's fairly new. So hopefully not just through this interview and this conversation, but also other ways that 
you know, this book gets out, we can get it in the hands of other students and teachers and, and really see the effect that it might have in the classroom. Um, Chris, I want to talk a little bit more about the gamification in mathematics education. You know, sometimes math can be a little dry um, mm -hmm. when you teach it, not just for the students, but also for the teachers themselves. And yes. I think we do have a lack of making math more tangible, making more relatable to real life, making it more fun, making it more motivational. And it's not just about this book, which I think is pretty captivating, but it's also about your teaching style, about making board games and making escape rooms and other things. Can you comment a little bit about, you know, what what has caused that and and and, and how can we encourage other maybe math teachers to, to, to take that step and be brave and try something different in their classroom. Yeah. I, uh, you know, when I was teaching public school, I got really good at teaching to standards and like helping kids through the process of math. And as I've grown as an educator, um, I just kind of got bored of teaching algorithms and I got bored of, uh, teaching in that way. So, you know, uh, this, this book is not the only way to improve your teach, you know, like there's a lot of, uh, uh, other, other ways to kind of make math more tangible and, uh, you know, more open-ended, more collaborative. I think those things are all really important in the classroom. Uh, but I hope that this book can kind of fill that void of gamification. And, and really the, the road that led me here was just kind of seeing boredom in my kids' eyes in my classroom and feeling boredom in teaching two-step equations for the 15th time in the same way. And so uh, kind of coming back to that and thinking about what, you know, what fun things can I steal to make this, uh, the practice of these, these mathematical skills that these kids, you know, need for SAT success and uh, college admission success and all, all those things that are kind of steps on their journey, uh, how can I make it more fun? And, you know, like, uh, you know, I, I was really lucky, uh, as you mentioned before, uh, shout out to Catherine Adams, who was that administrator. I feel really lucky to have this voice uh, and have this platform where I can, you know, kind of experiment with these ideas of connecting entertainment with mathematical practice. Um, and that's, uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, I hope that that got around to your question. Yeah, yeah. And, and maybe, maybe just to extend it a little bit, maybe if I could play devil's advocate, I Please. mean, I think other side of the coin might be a teacher that says, this sounds great, Chris. Yeah, of course, I want to have more games in the classroom, but my administrator isn't supportive. And, you know, I, I, I'm not a creative teacher. I don't, I, I don't know how to come up with these games. I don't know where to look for resources. And I'm a little fearful that maybe if I try something different, it won't necessarily be well received by the classroom. What if parents say that I ought to be sticking to the curriculum and sticking to the standards and, you know, they're, they're worried about high stakes testings and university admissions and all these different things. And so there's a lot of different reasons that a teacher might be discouraged from trying something different. What kind of advice would you give to the reluctant teacher? Absolutely. Um, I would say start small, you know, try something. Um, one, an activity that I like a lot is have the kids roll dice to randomly generate problems. And so if you're, if you're doing something kind of straightforward uh, for math practice in your classroom, you know, start small and see what the reaction is with your kids. Um, but in, in my personal experience, you know, I've found that the engagement that I get from these activities um, is, is well worth, you know, whatever pushback you might get, um, you know, and, and they're really bought in when you're able to bring in, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, when you're able to bring in uh, something that that approaches math from a little bit of a different angle. So it's not just taking notes in a notebook and it's not just listening to the teacher talk. It's a lot more collaborative. And there's uh, if you can include game mechanics like it, uh, you know, it, it kind of brings a little more joy and a little bit more a little bit more fun to your classroom. Um, and I think any teacher administrator is, is going to be in support of those things. Sure. Sure. Great advice. Chris, I know you're working on a lot of different projects. You're looking to get this book out into more hands and mm -hmm. eyes and trying to develop a little bit more visibility. Tell us a little bit more about what projects you're working on with this specific book, but also kind of other projects that you have going on in addition to your classroom duties as a teacher. Sure. Um, yeah, I, this book is kind of our, our main focus right now. Uh, we're, we're really trying to get the word out. We're, we're hoping that we'll get to move forward with a geometry sequel. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, 
different different math content, different characters, different setting, a whole, a whole new thing. We've got uh, quite a bit of it worked out already. Um, and then uh, the next one actually, which we're hoping is gonna come out this year is all about fractions. Um, mm. I wanted to start with Algebra One uh, because it is uh, historically kind of a gateway uh, it's like a barrier of access for a lot of students. A lot of students really start to struggle with math around this level. Uh, and I feel the same way about fractions. So our next one is uh, about fractions and it is, uh, it's, pr it's pretty ambitious. It's, it's a different format from this one. Um, I, I, I don't wanna, I don't wanna show my whole hand quite yet, but it's got, it's got some more artistic elements and some more puzzle solving in it. Um, and I think kids are really gonna connect to it or I, I certainly hope so. Chris, I'm, I'm, I want to loop back a little bit to the whole choose your adventure uh, format. It's an interesting choice to, to go through. And I remember reading choose your own adventure when I was a student. And so I know this is a genre or a style of book that is, you know, has stood the test of time. My second, yeah. my second grader who's at home has gotten into choose your own adventure books. But how do you respond to maybe the criticism from some educators that might say, that's not real reading. That's not, that's not a real book. And now on top of it, you're putting some math into it. Again, playing devil's advocate, how would you respond to, 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 to those critics? Well, I, I, I love Choose Your Own Adventure. And I think that the format is really malleable. I think there's a lot of... Uh, leeway you could do a lot of different things with it um you know i will acknowledge you know like my book doesn't necessarily have the character development that you're going to get from you know catcher in the rye or uh to kill a mockingbird but i think that the what i think about as a teacher when a kid reads a choose your own adventure book is is they have a lot of agency in that story and i think that that's a really powerful thing uh, you know, they get to make these choices throughout the story and they feel like they are involved because the main character is them. you know, like it's it's a very inclusive way to write stories because the main character is them. So it has all their traits. It, it you know, shares their identity and you get to put them in these kind of silly adventure stories. Um, and, uh, you know, with my book, I'm hopeful that 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 story and that, uh, you know, type of type of reading uh, will will uh, really engage them as a reader and it'll feel like this this really uh, three-dimensional experience uh, where you're practicing some math and also there's some excitement and there's jokes and there uh, there's a lot of momentum uh, with with the story aspect right well you've definitely captivated a little eight-year-old we've been reading it you read it last night and so um, certainly very captivating uh, Chris, before we head off, where can we find more information about this book, about you, about your work? Where can folks go for more information? Uh, well, I'll point to a couple things. Uh, the book is available on Amazon. Um, it's also available on Choose Your Own Adventures website. Uh, again, the name of the book is The Drake Disaster. Um, uh, yeah, I would I would poke over uh, to the, the Choose Your Own Adventure website. They just came out with a Stranger Things book uh, that I'll plug as well. Um, and uh, oh, I also have, uh, you know, you asked earlier about resources for teachers. Um, I have a blog. I'm sorry, I don't have the, <laughs> should have prepared this a little bit better. Um, let's see. Um, I'll, I'll just give you, maybe we can post the link below or something. Uh, but I link in the YouTube description. So yeah, certainly. And what's on the blog? Uh, I have a bunch of, uh, of game resources that I've created during my time as a teacher. So, uh, you know, if you want to try and include uh, Jenga or uh, Settlers of Catan, or if you want to try and include Operation or try, uh, I've got five or six uh, escape rooms that I, that I uh, built. Uh, if you want to give those a go, uh, there's a bunch of uh, gamified math resources on my blog. Um, I'll point to that as well. Um, but, uh, but yeah, uh, Dreg Disaster is, uh, it's out now and uh, check it out. It's a new, new way to think about uh, practicing math. Awesome. Well, once again, the Dreg Disaster, Choose Your Own Adventure. You can check it out on Amazon and also the Choose Your Own Adventure website. And then I also invite everyone to check out in the YouTube description Chris's blog. He's got a lot of different resources, gamification, escape rooms, and other goodies there. So check that out. Chris, thanks for spending a few moments with us today and sharing about your journey and this awesome project. Thanks for having me on, Wallace. Appreciate it. Thanks for watching and learning with us at School Rubric with educators from across the globe. For more access to articles, magazines, podcasts, live episodes, our international school directory, courses, and more, 
visit us at schoolrubric.org. Thank you.